Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am Subhash Chandran. In this video, we are going to discuss about the supreme piping skill to become the most important person in your piping discipline so that your organization will never ever leave you. That's the ultimate goal for all of us, right? We wanted to stay in job and we wanted to grow at the same time. At least one day, we wanted to be at the topmost level. That's why we are all working really hard in learning new things, improving our knowledges and gaining experience. So this supreme piping skill will help you to become the most important or the topmost guy in your piping discipline. Because this is the supreme activity that you will be doing at the topmost level. And that's why it's very important for every piping design engineers to know about it. Most piping design engineers do not know about it because they uh, haven't heard this uh, information from anyone or they haven't experienced it. Only those who have experienced, only those who have seen it can tell that this is the supreme piping skill. So that's what we are going to discuss about in this video. So before getting into this video, I just wanted to give you some basis about this supreme skill actually. So let's take a field experience of uh, swimming actually. Uh, to uh, call you as a good swimmer, you really wanted to have an experience in different waters. Say for an example, you wanted to become uh, really good in a pool and you wanted to um, be a good swimmer in river, ponds and lakes and even in seawater. If you say that I only have an experience in swimming pool and uh, I don't have an experience in uh, other waters, then we cannot consider uh, such a person as an expert in swimming. So those who are really a good swimmers should have an experience in different waters. So that's where they will be able to guide the person in different challenges, right? So when it compares um, directly into our field, actually, the person who are known to be the supreme should have an experience in different challenges. That's what we have compared with different waters, actually. There may be a different kind of challenges you are facing with one project and in other project there must be a different kind of challenges and different kind of making of designs, different kind of preparations actually, different requirements from clients. And once you go through these experiences, you will have some supreme skill. Okay, right. So that with that supreme skill, you will be able to handle the topmost level actually. So it will not happen overnight. It comes from stage wise. Say for an example, uh, if you are a beginner in piping, you must be starting as a designer. You must be uh, starting your career in 2D designing or 3D designing. So whatever designing that you're starting, you really have to be good in it. So uh, you can try hard. You can uh, really put a lot of efforts other than working hours. And you have to learn techniques and shortcuts and uh, the, the how you can expedite uh, your uh, work compared to your colleagues. Say for an example, if your colleague is completing uh, one particular model in eight hours, you must be able to complete within five to six hours. So that's the kind of uh, potential that you have to show in, uh, in order to grow. So every stage you wanted to show this potential right from designer and then design engineer and then um, uh, lead design engineer. Then um, uh, you can say as a principal design engineer. Likewise, in every stage you have to be uh, really good in whatever activity that you are doing. So that's where it comes because this is the fundamental that you have to arrange in order to become in order to uh, play the topmost role in your company. So let's come to the supreme skill that I'm going to talk about actually. See the supreme skill is something that is really going to benefit the organization. See if you are a person that organization feels that you can make money for the organization, that's the key important skill that you wanted actually. So what is the key important skill in piping? So before that, let's understand some stage wise actually. Say for an example, if you are uh, a piping design engineer, you must be able to handle the project, right? You must be able to handle the resources. You must be able to design the system based on the client requirements and you have to deliver on time. So if you are not able to do these three things like handling the resources, understand the client requirements and deliver on time, then you will not be considered as a good piping design engineer, right? Because our ultimate goal is to deliver to the client on time. If client feels that there is an immense delay in your project and still your design is not up to the mark actually, then we will not be able to get projects, right? So the ultimate aim is to uh, meet the client requirements on time. So in order to do this, what do you have to know? You have to know the each and every part of your design. Say for an example, if somebody asks you to develop the MTO, if you do not know how to develop an MTO, 
then uh, it's not possible for you from your level to deliver the MTO. And moreover, say for an example, if somebody asks you to deliver an MTO within a day and you from your experience and you only had an experience to deliver an MTO within a week's time and you cannot deliver within one day. So it's an inability to deliver the MTO within one day, right? So what you have to do? So your mind should work in that way. Within one day, if I had to deliver an MTO, what you have to do? You have to consider some assumptions, you have to consider some holes and you have to deliver. This is the kind of an experience that uh, as a competitive person that you have to learn actually. In order to grow, in order to improve in any field, you really have to be competitive and you really have to be flexible based on the company's requirement. I know there are people, those uh, most of the people are not flexible because I can see, uh, give you some uh, examples even that there are people who just wait for an input and they don't uh, start themselves in uh, order to, I mean, generating the input. See, in piping disciplines, there are cases that you will not receive input, but you have to go with assumptions. If you're not in a position to go with an assumptions, then finished. You have to go only with assumptions at almost in 30 to 50 percentage of your project. So that's the driving factor of a design engineer. Design engineer considers some assumptions based on their experience, based on the preliminary information. And if you're not in a position to progress your design without this assumptions, then I mean, uh, uh, you cannot deliver your design at all actually. That's where, that's how the project works actually. So basically in and out, each and every part of design, how micro level activities are monitored, these things that you have to know. That's where you can learn this particular skill that I'm going to tell you now. So the supreme skill, supreme piping skill for a piping design engineer to learn is its estimation. So I'll tell you why it is. To become a good piping engineering estimator, what do you have to do? You just have to, there are different ways of estimations, right? You uh, Either you estimate in terms of uh, hours or uh, you can estimate in terms of uh, lump sum amount that is based on client requirement. But most probably the, uh, the piping works are estimated based on hours. So based on the, for every hour, the client used to pay it actually. So being a good piping estimator, what you have to do is that, you have to observe how much work that you have to do it actually. So for that, you need to know the micro level activities. If you do not know the micro level activities, you may be considering some unnecessary hours which client may not agree. Say for an example, let's take an example that client comes to you for some particular project and being an inexperienced estimator, you have estimated somewhere around 5,000 hours. And from client side, say, you see, when a client gives you a job, they are not just uh, dumb, right? They also have a person who can review and approve it. They must also have uh, been experienced with the different consultant, different companies, right? So they will have some idea about it. So the moment they see your hours, they will consider. So this is an overestimated value. So they will not give you a job. So if you had to um, get a project, you have to really be a good estimator. For that, you need to know the micro level activities. And only then you will be able to arrive the fixed hours and over the fixed hours, you will be able to put your profit. If you do not know what is the actual fixed hours, say for an example, for MTO or piping GA or anything, uh, let's take an standard hours of eight hours actually. But in reality, you can complete this activity within three or four hours. But as a standard hours, you may be considering. But in competition, I'm saying that a client gives this um, kind of a project to different uh, players and uh, they used to receive estimation from different uh, consultants actually. So they will go to the person who uh, has quoted very low. If your quote is very high, you'll be directly rejected. So piping estimator is considered to be the supreme person. But this playing this particular role is always done by the topmost people because they know the in and out of the design. So how to estimate, it's, it's not like an easiest job. You have to really know the micro level activity and uh, you have to know the engineering activities in stage wise, what is the intensity of engineering activity and how much magnitude of work that you have to do. Only then you will be able to fix that particular hour. So that's one of the key scale actually. For that, you simply cannot become a piping estimator. You have to start your career from root. That's where I've said in the beginning of this video. So in order to become, in order to learn this particular skill actually, you really have to be good in every stage. 
right from the designer skill and I mean designer stage to the engineer stage and lead stage. So every stage you have to perform your duty and understand what you're doing and try to become a better than someone who is working along with you. So that's the key motivation that we all we can have actually. So once you learn this particular skill, you will be able to estimate. We are not, this is not the end of the video. There is an other skill also there. See, being an estimator, you are producing in a verse and bringing the project. And the second important thing is that you have to complete this job within this given hours. For that, you need to know how you can plan your resources and what all person that you can bring here so that you can finish this particular job within a given hours. There are project comes with the more hours and there are project comes with the less hours. The projects that comes with the less hours, you need to have really a good source, good knowledgeable person so that they can easily complete the work without uh, initiating or without coming out with a lot of doubts or clarifications. Because if you keep on going with a lot of clarification and doubts, you will not be able to complete the project. For that, you need to have a highly knowledgeable person who understand the requirement of the kind and deliver the design. So it's about the combination of two skills, being a good estimator and being an executor. You have to execute the project within the given hours, within the approved hours as per your estimation. So these are the two primary skills and it's not easy to earn this skill. And if you already possess this skill and you will be considered as the most important person, do you think the organization will leave someone who can make money? No, they will never actually. So possess these skills. These skills are vital skills and you will not be able to learn within a day. In order to learn this particular skill actually, you really have to be good in every stage. Whatever activity that you are doing, you really have to be good at. Don't become a compliant box. If you become a compliant box saying that I don't have inputs, I cannot run. You always have to be in a mindset that you go to your lead and say, I do not have an input, but how to get this done? Is there any other way? That should be your approach actually. The moment you uh, bring this change in within you actually, you will be uh, on the right track. So that's where uh, you will see is growth actually. So this is it guys. So try to improve your knowledge in this particular um, uh, area actually. Once you learn this actually, you will really be considered as an important guy and your growth towards the topmost position will be easier. Because you understand the client requirements, you can make money to the organization and moreover, you can execute the project on time. So that's where everything uh, depends actually. It's a collective knowledge. It's not about an area about knowledge about one particular area. It's a collective knowledge about the in total engineering work and piping. So to in order to get this knowledge, you need to give a time. But while giving a time, make sure that you have learned every stage properly. So that's where it is very important. It will play a key role in your life actually. I will meet you in another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.